In the American summer of 1947, the Second World War had been over for almost two years, but it was an uneasy peace. Following the defeat of fascism, the alliance of convenience between Western democracies and communist Russia had collapsed. Soviet Russia was expensively stabbing westward knifing into nations left empty by war. The United States had used atomic bombs to defeat Japan, but worried how long it would be alone in having the weapon. In this new Cold War, the US cast itself as the defender of freedom, even if that meant a third world war. If we falter in our leadership, we may endanger the peace of the world and we shall surely endanger the welfare of this nation. In America, paranoia was growing about communist infiltration of unions, the entertainment industry, and the military and government itself. And in that summer of 1947, some very peculiar stories started to appear. Reports that strange flying discs have been whizzing at 1,200 miles an hour over the western United States. And three days later... Eight flying saucers described as more like wash tubs and each about the size of a five-bedroom house were reported today. Further south in New Mexico, a 48-year-old rancher named Mac Brazel had made a rather unusual discovery. A large area of wreckage including rubber strips, tin foil, a rather tough paper and sticks. Mac Brazel had heard the reports of flying discs and wondered if the debris he'd found had something to do with that. He spoke to the local sheriff, George Wilcox, who in turn contacted the nearby Roswell Army Airfield. An intelligence officer named Jesse Marcel went with Brazel and Wilcox to the crash site and recovered more material. The following day, the Roswell Army Airfield, known as the RAAF, issued an eye-catching statement. The many rumours regarding the flying disc became a reality yesterday when the intelligence office of the 509th Bombing Group of the 8th Air Force Roswell Army Airfield was fortunate enough to gain possession of a disc through the cooperation of one of the local ranchers and the sheriff's office of Chavez County. The next day's Roswell Daily Record embellished that a bit with the headline RAAF Capture Flying Saucer on Ranch in Roswell Region. The word disc was mysterious enough, but flying saucer suggested a visitor from another planet. Remember, it was only nine years since actor Orson Welles had broadcast a radio play about a fictional Martian invasion that had caused something of a panic. Of the creatures in the rocket cylinder at Grover's Mill, I can give you no authoritative information either as to their nature, their origin or their purposes here on Earth. How many people really believe they were hearing news of a Martian attack is still debated. It may have just been a bit of a beat up, but it was enough to cause Orson Welles to apologise. Of course, we are deeply shocked and deeply regretful about the results of uh, last night's broadcast. After the Roswell incident, hundreds of other reports of UFOs and flying saucers came flooding in. The next day, the US Army changed its story, saying it was a harmless, high-altitude weather balloon, not a grounded flying disc. Still, Mac Brazel said that he'd picked up bits of weather balloons before, and that's not what he found this time, but he was tired of all the fuss and he let it rest, as did most people until 1994, when the US government finally revealed Mac was right. It was not a weather balloon. It wasn't a Martian spaceship either. The report said that the Roswell debris was part of a different kind of balloon, one used in the top secret Project Mogul. Essentially, an airborne bugging device to listen out for possible Soviet nuclear tests and missile launches, it included a chain of high-altitude balloons and large kite-like radar targets for tracking. It was one of those kites that Mac Brazel found and probably explains a number of similar sightings like that string of flying wash tubs. Lots of other secret weapons, rockets, planes and nuclear devices were all being tested around that time in New Mexico and nearby Nevada. Decades later, alleged witnesses claimed that they'd even seen aliens being whisked away by the military. Officials said they were parachute test dummies. 
To this day, some believe a spaceship did come down at Roswell and all of the evidence about foil and paper balloons was faked. But the real mystery may be, why did the Roswell Army Air Force initially fuel speculation about disks? Was it misinformation designed to distract from Project Mogul? Did they intend to cause a panic? Was it a mistake, a failed joke, or could it just possibly have been the truth and quickly covered up? Last year, President Trump was asked about Roswell in an interview with his son, Don Jr. And he seemed faintly amused and probably more concerned about tourism than extraterrestrials. Would you ever open up Roswell and let us know what's really going on there? So many people ask me that question. I know, yeah. it sounds almost ridiculous, no, but it's actually it the real question I want like to know. like a cute question, but it's actually, there are millions and millions of people that want to go there, that want to see it. I won't talk to you about what I know about it, but it's very interesting. But Roswell's a very interesting place with a lot of people that would like to know what's going on. So, we may be about to find out what's going on and ultimately what the American public chooses to believe.